Meet Caden, Maisie, Baloo and Millie. We're following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. They invite us into their lives, at home and as they undergo treatment. Meet 12-year-old Baloo. Hey guys, it's Baloo again. Baloo has a condition called sickle cell anemia. This is where the body produces unusually shaped red blood cells which aren't very good at carrying oxygen. This causes problems such as pain, tiredness and blood clots. To make sure Baloo's blood is carrying enough oxygen, she has to have it regularly tested at hospital. This is Debbie. She's taken my bloods today. Hi. Hopefully she'll be giving me loads. <laughs> Debbie is going to collect a sample of Baloo's blood using a finger prick test. It's not painful, but it's OK, I mean, because I've been getting it, like, every day of my life, really, so it's kind of just a normal thing for me. And how's Baloo's finger doing, Debbie? 10 out of 10. Hello, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yay! Well done, Baloo's finger. So we've got all them bloods off us today. I'm so proud of my finger. Look at my finger. <laughs> so cool. These blood samples will be sent to the lab to be tested. The doctors will then look at the results, and if there's anything that they don't like, then Baloo will be called in to speak <laughs> to the doctor. So now you know who's taken my blood, and now you know where I take my blood. So see you next time, guys, on... Operation Ouch. Ouch. It's time to visit our next Ouch patient. Hello. Remember Millie? She has polyarticular arthritis. Millie's condition means she experiences pain in her joints. Arthritis also makes my joints really stiff. To help strengthen the muscles around her joints, she has to do exercises at home. I do this to strengthen my ankle. She also has to go for regular physiotherapy lessons. This is my physiotherapist, Leona. Hi. <laughs> she gives me lots of exercises to help my joints and she makes me giggle. Because Millie's arthritis affects different parts of her body, Leona has lots of exercises for her to practice. This strengthens the muscles around her joints so she can be more active and have less pain. Wow, that looks fun. When I'm older, I want to be a physio so I can help other children that have arthritis and other problems. I love cycling. Physio is really good um, and I'm looking forward to going next time. And how do you think Millie did, Leona? I think Millie is definitely, you're definitely getting stronger, aren't you? So what we do need to do is add a few more to your next programme now to make it a bit harder. No. <laughs> oh, never mind, Millie. Come and see how I'm doing next time. Bye. 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 Here's Rio, Amelia, Phoebe and Alicia. We've been following them across this series and seeing what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. We're checking in with them all one last time. Let's start with Rio. Hello. Rio has a prosthetic leg and he's mad about sports. Last time we saw him training for the Limb Power Junior Games. I can't wait to run on my new blade. It's going to be amazing. At the Games, Rio gets to compete in loads of sports, including sitting volleyball, football, and his new favourite event, running, with this brand new blade. When I run on my blade, it makes me feel like I've got spring. It's race time! On your mark, set, go! Good job, Rio. The race was very good. I've had loads of fun meeting new people and doing lots of activities. Thanks for watching my story. Bye! Thanks, Rio. We've also been following Amelia and her back. Amelia has scoliosis, which means she has a curved spine. And today we're catching up with her as she makes her latest vlog with the help of her mum. Hello, everybody. Mm? I do my vlog to help other children with the same condition as me. I've spoken before about not being able to do much activities, but recently I have joined a tennis club. The videos that I have done are about how to cure hospital boredom and reviews of massage oils. I've had comments from Australia and America. All these comments make me want to do more because I know it helps. Brilliant. Thanks for following my story. Bye. Bye, Amelia. Thank you. Next up, it's Alicia and her troublesome tummy. Hi. 
Alicia's inflammatory bowel disease has led to her not really wanting to eat until now. Today I'm going to have a picnic at the park with my friends. And when it comes to picnics, there's not much that can top a chocolate dessert. It smells nice. <laughs> well, we're going to make it from the special milkshakes that I've been given from my dietitian. These milkshakes help Alicia gain weight and boost her energy. I think they look really delicious and I hope my friends enjoy them. Well, the proof is in the pudding. It's like... <laughs> It's really good. Thank you. I really like playing with my friends and doing lots of different activities. Because she's taking her new energy drink, she can play with her more. Thanks for following me on my journey. Bye. Bye, Alicia. Thank you. Nice ouch face. Here's Phoebe, our last ouch patient. When Phoebe was younger, she had to have a liver transplant. <laughs> and she's been training for the British Transplant Games and today's competition day. The Games is for anybody who has had a transplant, even if you're a donor. Doctors can transplant part of a liver, as it has the ability to regrow to its full size. A man who died gave me his liver. I got a sixth of it and the rest went to my liver sister, who is called Bonnie. And before she competes, Phoebe receives a special message. Hi, Phoebe. It's your little liver sister in Florida. I'm just calling to wish you the best of luck. It makes me so happy and so proud of you. We have this lifelong bond. Thanks to the generosity and donation of a liver by a wonderful family. I'll be thinking of you. Mm -hmm. Bonnie's message must have inspired her because Phoebe powers through her tennis. Winning was Phoebe. Congratulations. Well done, well played. So a goal to my first time. That's good. Next up, table tennis. Phoebe. Double gold medalist. Awesome. Thanks for following my journey. Bye. Bye, Phoebe. And a big thanks to all four of you. You've been amazing ouch patients. <laughs> Meet Rio, Emilia, Phoebe and Alicia. We're following them across this series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. Say hi to 10-year-old Alicia. Hi. Alicia has recently been diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD. Inside of my gut, everything is inflamed and because of this, sometimes I have sharp stomach pain, I feel sick and I have to go to the toilet quite a lot. Another symptom of IBD is extreme tiredness. Before I used to always walk to school and now I can't do that since I get very tired so I have to take the bus. After school, Alicia loves getting out and about on her bike. Cycling's really fun. But unfortunately, since being diagnosed with IBD, Alicia hasn't been able to ride it as much. I get really tired very quickly and you have to come inside. Luckily, she has plenty of other activities. Oops. And who's this furry friend? Kitty is my kitten, who's four months old. My mum got her for me because I wasn't going outside as much and I got quite bored inside. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the hoop trick. Wow, <laughs> I've never been able to teach Chris the hoop trick. Alicia's only recently been diagnosed with IBD, so her doctors are still monitoring her progress closely and working out what will help relieve her symptoms. My doctor arranged an appointment um, with a dietitian, so it's going to be a really exciting but nervous experience for me at the same time. I call this feeling nervous sighted. Ooh, new word. See you next time, Alicia. Bye! Bye! Time to meet our next ouch patient. Say hello to eight-year-old Phoebe. Hi, come on in. When she was a baby, Phoebe had a liver transplant. When I was one year old, my mum saw some yellow occurring around my eye. Yellow in the white of the eye is known as jaundice and can be a sign of something serious. Phoebe was diagnosed with acute liver failure. That means I'd have to get a new liver. She was put on an urgent transplant list and 36 hours later, she received a new liver. Phoebe's been living with a replacement liver for six years and has to take regular medication to stop her body rejecting the liver. She can't eat an hour before or 30 minutes after taking her tablets. I get really hungry. I bet you do. But it gives her enough time to start preparing something to eat. It's important that I clean my hands because if I've touched some things, I could get sick. I can't eat bio yogurts. I can't eat some fruits. I can't and I can't have dippy eggs. 
These foods are totally safe for most people to eat, but because they contain live bacteria, they increase Phoebe's risk of getting an infection. 30 minutes are up, Phoebe. Tuck in. Yummy. Join me next time for my hospital appointment. Bye. Bye. Ouch. Meet Caden, Maisie, Bolu and Millie. We've been following them across the series as they show us what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. So, for one more time, let's catch up with 12-year-old Maisie. Hello. Hello. She has celiac disease and found out that some gluten was sneaking into her diet, so there's still a bit more work to do. I'm going on my, on my adventure trip with my class tomorrow for the week and I'm really excited but I'm also quite nervous obviously because of my like meal times and stuff. <laughs> to put Maisie's mind at rest, the kitchen staff on the adventure trip invite her in to show her the precautions they've taken to keep gluten out of her food. We keep that corner for all the gluten-free and the gluten-free toaster. So these two shelves are where we keep the gluten-free all labelled so nothing gets put in that shouldn't be there. I'm feeling a lot better and a lot more confident about how my food and eating is going to be this week. Great news, Maisie. Now you can enjoy it. It's fun, but it's hard. Thanks for following my story. Bye. Bye. We've also been following 11-year-old Caden. He has cystic fibrosis, and last time he was preparing to take more control over his diet and medication when he gets to high school. I need to know how much fat is in my food. I can take tablets. Time for some practice at home. It says fat per 100 grams is 30.5 grams. So five times something would equal 30. That's six. But per bag, it's four grams. So this would be one tablet. He's cracked it. It looks like Caden will be fine at high school. Best of luck, fella. Thanks for following my story. Bye. Another one of our outpatients this series is 10-year-old Millie. <laughs> We've seen Millie having physio and her weekly injection at home to help with her polyarticular arthritis. Hi again, everyone, and today I'm going to be going out on my bike. My physiotherapist, Leona, said that I should start riding my bike because it helps my arthritis. When I'm running, it hurts, but when I'm on my bike, it just doesn't hurt. I just feel free because, like, I'm not having to be in pain and I'm just like, yay, I get to go fast for once. OK, bye, everyone. Good luck for the future, Millie. Bye. Our last ouch patient to catch up with is Bolu, who has sickle cell anemia. Last time, Bolu had to go into hospital, but luckily she's now home again. And when she's feeling better, she likes to get out and about. Hi everyone, this is my mom and my brother. You might not have met him before, but he's my brother. And um, today we are in London to see some family and we're also going to see some sights. So hopefully they're going to be amazing. I can see the river and the eye. Oh my goodness. Hey, look at that. It's Big Ben. It's so big. No wonder they call it Big Ben. Because it's a big city, it's going to be a lot of walking. I have to be careful that I don't get too tired. I have to, like, make sure I'm taking rest in between because if I was to get too tired, if I'm not careful, it would turn into a crisis and I'd have a tap. And that means I'd have to go into hospital again and nobody wants to go into hospital. That's the end of my sightseeing today, guys. Got to make sure I don't get too tired. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks, Ouch Patients. Ouch.